What happened? Holy. Oh. Whew. Well, I don't think that went off without a hitch, but uh, we at least, I think, salvaged this part. Well, we broke our end mill. Finally happened. Not sure what happened. I was, uh, I stepped away to start closing the garage door because it's starting to get a little dark and late here and I didn't want to bother the neighbors. And then this happened. My guess is the work came loose. We can, we should still be able to pick up our G55 point on the part that hasn't been touched yet. So we will come back at this, uh, we're going to have to use the 3 8 inch end mill, though. And it'll have to be tomorrow, because it's getting supper time. And the kitties are getting restless. They need to eat my flesh, it seems. Golly. All right. Well. Pooper diddles. We were so close. Let's go check the GoPro footage. No, the cheap knockoff GoPro footage. And see what happened to this thing. I think our work holding solution was inadequate. She done pulled right, I think she pulled right out. Okay, so that uneven edge right there is why we got in trouble. Uh, we couldn't hold that properly and that's why she slipped out of the jaws. It's not quite as bad on this side, but there's still some even on this side. So we went ahead and cleaned up this edge uh, so it's nice and perpendicular to the face. And that should help us clamp quite a bit easier. Let's go. Fi let's go finish this. All right. Uh, I'm not very good at this whole clamping situation, but uh, you know, a friend of mine told me that if uh, if you if you flick your wrist just right, you can get this to lodge in there real good and tight. See, just like that. Ugh. Remember, it's all in the wrist. Well, apparently I've been defeated again, because uh, she started coming up right about the second time she went across there. Huh. I... I don't know why. I really don't know why. Why is she doing this? And she, uh, she done ruined my side finish. <laughs> she has definitely ruined my side finish. Ah! All right, round three, fight.
What happened? Holy. Oh. I bet it shorted out. Well. Hmm. That was going well. Um. All right, so. Everything's pretty hot. Motor's nice and cool. The the spindle's pretty warm. Workpiece is pretty warm. Eh, it's cold actually, and I can touch that without burning myself. So I think we're we're high speed machining. Question is, what the deuce just made that spark? Golly! All right, so I mean, I have that electrical cord there. Did was that it? I'll have to review the video. All right, so you look right there. We have a burn mark. Yeah. Right there, we have a burn mark where a piece of shrapnel got in between here and here and shorted out the leads. So, I think we'll be fine. I think we're going to be just fine. Let's fix this. There, fixed. I mean, why do it the right way the first time? How are you going to learn perseverance, right? All right, let's see if she powers back on. No way, really? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Windows. We, we, we shut down normally last time. There wasn't a giant spark. So as much as I ridicule that, it did kind of save my bacon. We are protected from shorts. And pants. And shirts. Ah, crap, what's my password? It's been forever. Something complicated and long. There we go. Run as administrator. Yes, do your thing. All right. Now you. You need to work again. Hey! All right. X. All right. Z down. Seems like that's working. All right. We're, good. we're in business. Ah, someday. Some sweet day. We'll be together. All right, let's try this again. Come on, motor, start up. Ha ha ha, beefcake. So you might be asking yourself, what was the point of all this? Well, this was the point of all this. This is my Grizzly G4000 lathe. Um, and it had this kind of anemic two-bolt clamping plate. So two bolts, uh, this support was in the center, and it let it rock pretty easily. It could rock back and forth because all of the support was directly in line with the pivot point, so there was no leverage. It couldn't, it couldn't leverage itself into a more sturdy position. So this was the point. There she sits. Huh? Now, 
this design is not mine. I found it on the internet. Um, I'll try to find the design. I, I, I downloaded and printed off the design like uh, months ago, and I'm not sure if I have the paper still. But uh, if I can find it, this is his name. Given the level of care and precision that, that I've shown in this build, which is, you know, none, I, I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, we, we had some mishaps. I really would prefer that to be on the other side, <laughs> where I wouldn't see it. Um, but we can also take this off and trim down that edge. So, so how it works, you just take your, you know, you got to make sure just enough room. And you get your get your wrench in there, and you tighten her down. Then she doesn't move. And with this design, we have two bolts either side of the pivot point. Because most of the force is uh, placed here on the cutting tool. So yeah, you put your cutting tool like so. Your, all your cutting force is here. And that will want to rock the whole thing forward. And these bolts, because they're further away from the center, should be able to provide much more uh, force to restrain it. All in all, happy. Happy with that. Um, really, this is a job for a four-jaw chuck. For those center lot, those center holes, and then maybe the mill to do this portion here, this top portion. But I kind of wanted to see how out of round my mill is, and the answer is very out of round, um, especially in steel. Apparently, all right. Whew. I can't think of anything else other than to say thanks for watching. Okay, this is pretty cool. Look at that. <laughs> There's a magnet behind there. And it totally made like this mushroom thing.